you ever get the feeling like, no, oh, I've just got too many projects going on. Like, I just don't know if I'm coming or going anymore. I've got, you know, the the HOA meetings. I've got that big report I'm doing for work, I'm trying to do some YouTube videos. Like, what what do I do? Like, how do I keep all this stuff organized? Like, hey, what? There's just, just too much stuff going on. Like, what do I? I just can't. I just can't do all of it. Ah, so today you can relax. You can finally take a deep breath, calm yourself, and let Emacs handle that for you. Uh, but of course, it's not easy getting yourself organized, sorting yourself out, cleaning up your room, Jordan Peterson style. It is something that you have to work on. And Emacs, of course, has org mode. It is a system that can help you get organized. But you have to use it, and you have to configure it, and you have to try it out. Uh, I did a video about um, trying org mode as my main you know, organization system uh, for six months of this year. And uh, so you can go back and, and check that out. But um, I don't exactly use the system that I'm about to show you for, for everyday productivity things, as I explained in the video. But I know that there are some people who this system is exactly what they're looking for. You're looking for something where you can sit down at your computer and just get to work right away. And at the end of the day, you can pretty much just like put a bookmark in everything you've done and you can pick up tomorrow knowing exactly where you left off. So it doesn't have to be on your mind. It's like the, uh, the the Cal Newport shutdown, shutdown complete, end of the day. You're not thinking about work. You have left notes for yourself. You've left reminders. Anything that you need, org mode does all of that. And it does it really well. I haven't found a tool yet that does that better. But of course, as I said in the video, it depends on your input. You know, you don't want to put everything in this, but for for handling those projects and doing it, particularly in uh, like the David Allen GTD getting things done style. Really, I think org mode is the you know second to none in that regard. So I'm going to go through here a very simple org mode GTD setup. Um, you might see I did another video a while back where I, I, I ran through this process, but it was kind of long winded. It was a live stream. I made a few mistakes along the way and um, I didn't have as detailed notes as I have now. And I did a lot of explaining about the GTD program itself, which I'm going to skip now. So this is this is simplified. This is just the the meat of the thing. And of course, there's a lot of other nice things that org mode helps with. But this is the skeleton of the system. It just gets it up and running. And then you can do the cool stuff as you build and build and build on it one step at a time. So if you want to know more about the GTD system, you have to read the book, Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity, by David Allen. And then you can take it to the next level with Making It All Work by David Allen. Winning at the game of work in the business of life. Or, you know, if you're someone that just wants to get down and dirty, there's the Getting Things Done workbook. It's it's thinner. It doesn't give you a lot of the theory. Uh, David Allen is like, he's like, a, he's like a productivity philosopher. So he really does, you know, he, you know, his, his Socratic method on all of this stuff. But if you just want like the workbook, it just tells you what to do. And you just, you know, you, oh, you, you buy your inbox, you do your thing, you do your thing. You do your, um, you know, your clarifying and your organization. And uh, so then you have the, you have the, everything you need for the, the getting things done uh, methodology. Uh, look, I like business books. All right. You know, I, you don't have to follow them religiously, but as, as you read a lot of different ones and different opinions, you form a, a mosaic of, of good habits that, that you can build into your life. All right, so here we go. We're going to jump right in. I think I've talked long enough. We're going to go to the, the org mode setup here. So super simple. Now, um, I'm going to have this on my on my my Git server for you. Uh, I'll put a link below so you can find it there. But basically, what we, what we do here is I take all of the, the things that you need and I, I build them out into a... Um, gtd.bl file where is it so this is this is the you know the lisp version of, of what 
was happening in the org file there. So we're going to go through it bit by bit. Where is it? There we go. I've, I've made this file read only so I don't accidentally type stuff into it. So I always do that. All right. So the first part here is we're going to define the files that org mode is going to look at where you're putting all of your content, basically. So Emacs is going to parse through those. Um, and what I did here is uh, I'm mentioning basically you change what is in these quoted values here. These are strings, and they're just file paths to where your file of your next actions, next.org, your projects file. And if if you wanted to add another one, you know, you can you can do a, a carriage return there, try to keep those those two parentheses there and just do another quoted string. But as I'm saying, like this is the basic skeleton. So yeah, what you need is the, the next file and the projects file. And I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, actually, I'm not going to evaluate these yet. We're going to evaluate the entire list buffer after this. So as I said there, you can decline to use this one. In other ways, you can actually open the file you want to add to the agenda and do control. Uh, is it control? Ooh, I think I might have this wrong. I think it's control C and then the, well, I'll have to fix that, I believe. Unless I, unless I don't, well, okay, I'll have to check that. Um, but basically, yeah, this is, this is the code that you'll need. All right. So then we have some, uh, I put some variables in here because what we're going to be doing is setting up a custom agenda command called GTD view. So, You'll see down here, it's kind of a, if you're not used to writing an Emacs lisp, which which I'm not <laughs> really either, um, you is you if you can avoid getting into this as much as possible, you know, the better. Because once you've set up the command, what we do here is we basically change the header. So when we list the agenda, it has little headings for what each section is. We're doing all the GTD stuff in one view. You can have it separate where you, if you just want to see your next actions, they can be in one list. If you just want to see projects, you can do that. We're doing it all in, in one agenda view just because I think that's a little simpler as far as setup. And you know, if you don't want to look at the projects, you don't have to. So what I do here is that basically I set variables. And you can probably do this better. You can probably have like um, an A list, I think. Um, but I just, you know, maybe I'll go back and do that. I just made it simpler, really simple here so you can see. So we're just defining a header, headers basically. So when you open up your GTD view, you'll see it'll say next actions and it'll have the list of them. things you're waiting on. It'll have a, a list of them right there, all in one view. So that whole section is just setting the variables. And then here's the command itself. And again, as before, these are strings in here. So yeah, just change them to whatever you want. If you if you don't want colons, you know, get rid of the colons. Um, one thing I added this time that we didn't have last time was I put in a someday maybe. These are, if you put something in your projects, if you tag it someday, it will not show up in the default projects view. You see here, there's like a little bit of a Boolean here. So when you when it does the when it lists the projects, it'll list items that are tagged projects minus someday. So that's just projects. And then for someday, the someday list, it is looking for things that are just tagged someday. So that that's some very basic logic that works. All right, now we're going to have fun and actually do this. All right, so now I've tangled all these code blocks into the gtd el file and you can do um, eval buffer i believe it did that so now when we do control c a bring up the agenda you'll see my font is big so you had to scroll down a little bit but you can see right there we have g that's gtd view so you hit g all right and hit o it brings it up in a, in a new buffer here if you hit o it makes it full screen now we have here, I have, this is a variable I customized to have my agenda just show me the current day. You can you can change that to show it uh, like the week view like that. Or I think there's even like a month view. Um, I forget what, um, yeah, it's M. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I like the day view because theoretically, let's say it's Saturday and you have something due on... 
Monday, let's say. So it'll tell me right here. It'll show me that thing that has a deadline and it'll say, you know, you've got, um, you know, two days or whatever. It'll tell you right on the, on the prompt there. But if you have the week view, you'll see it twice. So you'll see it for today, the deadline warning today, and you'll see the actual deadline on Monday. So you're seeing it. It's kind of, it's a little redundant. So, and I'm sure there's a way you can customize it to not do that, but it's easier for me to just look at the day view because it's, it's just the one day and I can focus on this day and what's needed to be done today. So I think, I think that's preferable for me. And now you see your next actions. These were all the headers that we set as variables, next actions, waiting on completed projects. Someday, maybe learn, learn Spanish. And that is it. That is your GTD view right there. Um, I will show you that, for example, what you can do from, from the agenda here is you can click um, one of these items and it'll, it'll go to that heading in your file. And so, for example, if um, I ordered batteries, now I'm next to do state, I'm waiting on batteries, I can save that, go back to the agenda, you hit R, now that the battery says move to to waiting i'm waiting on batteries um, and you see this little part here where it says next that's because it is in the next.org file but you can change that so if we go back here you can do control c control x p for property give it a, a category of anything you know like supplies let's say save it go back to the agenda hit r so you can see now it says supplies and if you if you had several entries like that and you only wanted to see things that are um, categorized that way, I believe you can hit um, the, the less than symbol and it'll only show you now in the whole agenda view only things that are categorized as supplies. So that and you can undo that by hitting less than again. And of course, down here you have your projects and the same thing goes for projects. You, you tag the heading in the file with whatever category you want and it does that and you'll notice in the if we go to the gtd.el uh, how is it actually doing this so for everything in the next actions it's using the to-do states because um in, in my world this is like bob ross right in your world you know you can do you can do this and that um in my world i don't really you, you can tag the, the next actions, but I think the categories are enough. So I have them organized by to-do state. So as something is next, um, you actually will see it pop up in the next section. So like up here and under next actions. So there might be something that you put in there that, you know, you, you have, you don't want to do yet for whatever reason. If you, if you don't have it, uh, tagged as next not tagged if you don't have it as a to-do state of next it won't show up here yet so it kind of enters the system or if it's something you wanted to do on a specific day and you wanted to schedule it instead of giving it um listing as a next action you can schedule it and it'll show up above here in the agenda on the day when you wanted to do it instead of as a, a next action so that's why i do it that way in the at least for the next action part the projects are tagged project because they may not have a, a to-do state yet. A project might just be, you know, it's the thing that has many steps. So I use the tags here. When you go to the project file, you'll see there's this uh, declaration up here, file tags. So any heading you add here is going to automatically be tagged as a project. And so you'll, so you'll see them listed in the agenda. If you tag one of them as someday, then it's going to show up in the someday section instead of the project section, of course. Um, so let's see. So I can categorize learn Spanish as, um, you know, life improvement. Let's say. And go back to the agenda and say life improvement, learn Spanish. So uh, that is kind of a big category. You, uh, you probably wouldn't want to do that because now it looks kind of, uh, well, it's fine. I mean, it. It definitely gets the job done. So that is it. Wow. In 15 minutes, I did what I you know did in like an hour and a half in the in the last video. So yeah, that is your that is your very basic org mode GTD system. 
Now, as I said, just a bit of uh, housekeeping stuff. I should have some links to these files on my on my Git server up there, so that you can look at these and and, and do them yourself. I may go back and correct that that one thing, but um, you know you have the code. So if you wanted to just copy and paste that into your init file or, or wherever, um, you would just you would just do the load function and you can you can bring this in. And of course, um, you'll see that I've got the I have these files set in my you know dot cache directory. You can put those anywhere. You can put those in documents or you know somewhere where you'll actually use them really doesn't matter because you'll basically that's why i say it doesn't matter where these are you can put them in a convenient place where you don't even see them you know in your in your home directory you can you because you don't you're not going to actually open up a folder like you would in your in your gui uh desktop manager and open the file to start working you you can do everything from the agenda so it doesn't matter where these files are located. You could just open up Emacs, open up the agenda, and you can get to your stuff. So it's it's kind of the reverse. You're, you're not just opening your, your work files to get started. You just open up Emacs. And that's why I said in the beginning, this is the best way that I found to just get going on something without having to mess with a lot of, a lot of crap. If you are centering your day around the agenda, you know, so it's it's all your preference about how you want to get there. But anyway, yeah, that's it. Um, so go on, enjoy GTD, get the books or don't, or just, you know, this is the, this is basically the system, so you can use it however you want. So thanks. Check out the files if you want. I'll see you guys next time.